Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia. I post new tutorials every single Thursday, primarily on tumblers, but I do do extra stuff. And this is one of those extra things. So we are, or retail is in full Halloween swing. It is next month. People are starting to decorate and most crafters are well on their way to making stuff. So I made a, and I'm gonna show you, I made this cute little candle jar uh, using a martini glass that I picked up at a thrift store and a spare mason jar that I found in my basement. And so I put some glitter in here and I got little accessories and I made this and I had a request to do a tutorial. So that's what this is gonna be. So if you're interested to see what I came up with and how I achieved this look, stick around and I'm gonna go ahead and get started. <music> So I have a cabinet where I keep glass jars, mason jars that I buy, and other glass jars that I just collect. And so when I want to make a project, I just go in and I pick out which one I want to use. And so I think I like the shape of this one. All right, so let's get started with this. So obviously the next step is to get this label removed from this jar and remove the top and so this peels off pretty nice but it does leave a nice sticky gluey residue so I get that off by using acetone it takes it off I do it with a cotton swab and I've done this before in my other videos I've explained that I like using cotton swabs it's something about the texture that removes it but it does get gooey so I do come back in with a paper towel and give it a nice good wipe too just to get like the rest of the residue off so this one came off pretty easy and oops yeah I spilled my acetone so I have to clean that up so it doesn't ruin the surface underneath my paper but just give it a good wipe down and you're gonna wipe this jar down a few times before you move on to each step so like now I'm using 91% alcohol to clean the bottoms of my jar and my martini glass. I'm going to use E6000 to glue these together. And I have such a hard time getting this uh, cap off. Like the caps, they, they get glued onto themselves. So I'm going to put a generous amount on the bottom of the jar. That's what I'm going to call it, a jar. And you, you got to kind of use a lot. You probably could use a hot glue gun, but I just feel that the E6000 is going to give it a more permanent seal than the hot glue. So once I get that on there, then what I'm going to do now is to, for a quick secure, I'm going to use UV resin. And so this is a StarCraft brand UV resin that I got at, at Annie Up uh, Graphic Supply to try out a new UV resin. And I do like this better than the other stuff that I was buying from Amazon. It seems to cure nicer than the other stuff. The other stuff I couldn't seem to get cure without being sticky unless I set it in the sun where this one seems to be curing under my little UV light. So, so that's gonna give it this instant freeze. And then later on, you know, the E6000 is gonna, you know, seal it really well. So once I'm done that, I'm going to take polycrylic and I'm going to use that as my adhesive for the glitter inside the jar. So I'm going to put a generous amount in there. I'm going to swirl it around. My polycrylic is mixed with some water to dilute it. You can use it full strength or you can dilute it. I wouldn't dilute it more than 50% though because it will make it a little too watery. And you do want it to have some adhesion, so clearly, because you want, you're gonna put the glitter in there. I'm gonna let this sit on a paper towel and drain for five minutes, then I'm gonna come in with my glitter. And this glitter is Fire and Brimstone. It is a little bit different than the one I used on the Spooky Candle, which the name of that was I Put a Spell on You. And so I'll list those in the description uh, uh, box down below. And so you just put a little bit in and you twirl it around to give it coverage. Now I'm going to put some in. I, I err on the side of caution and put less than more because whatever is coming out of this jar, I will not save. I will throw in a garbage because it may be contaminated with some polycrylic, which could make it sticky and dry in clumps. So I will throw this away. So I do less than more. So I don't have to throw a whole lot away. All right. So this is going to dry. It's drying. It's still wet inside, 
but I'm gonna come out and start spray painting the bottom. And so I spray the whole bottom and then uh, like up underneath, which the up underneath gives it a little bit of paint spray at the bottom, which is what I like that look. While that's drying, I'm gonna go ahead and weed my vinyl. I use this weeding box to help with the metallic and it doesn't work on the black. And, and once this is put together, I am going to apply it to my jar. Make sure you clean your jar with 91% alcohol, but don't hit that paint because it will come off. So, but you wanna make sure it's got a good clean surface before you apply your decal. And so this decal was pretty big. It was, in retrospect, I probably should have made it a little bit smaller, but it was already, I already cut it out, so I figured I'll just use it. Uh, but the top, it kind of, it went up and around where the lid screws on. It got a little bumpy, so you'll have to smooth that out, like give that a little extra pushes and kind of get it in the nooks and cranny, which is okay. It's not 100% smooth, but I'm okay with that. You can have a little bit of crinkly. It is a spider web. And uh, so I just make sure I get that on and peel back my transfer tape very, very gently because I don't want to pull any paint off. The paint's unprotected by any epoxy or anything. And so you run the risk if your tape is too sticky that you could pull it off. So make sure you don't use a strong bond transfer tape and uh, just, you know, de-stick it if you do so that you don't pull that paint off. All right, so now that my decal's on, I'm going to come in with my black acrylic paint, and I'm just going to kind of just brush some lines down like the bottom. I'm going to make it look sort of distressed and dirty. I just want to break up that orange. It's a little bit too much orange for me. You can leave it. It's completely up to you. It's optional. I am using a chip brush, which helps me to get these lines. And so I am using a gloss black acrylic paint. I would have preferred a matte black so because I, I don't want this to be shiny. So I'm going to go around and do this. And then when I am done painting this, I'm going to let it dry for about 10 minutes. And then I'm going to take it outside and spray it with matte, uh, the two times Rust-Oleum matte clear, as you can see here, I'm going to give it two coats of that, let it dry. And then I'm going to be back to apply spiders onto this jar. So I'm using black hot glue in here on these. Well, first I've got this little tiny uh, rat that came in a pack from Amazon. And then I have these little spiders that also came in a pack. These were separate, like the spiders were the spiders and bats were in one pack. And then the the um, the mice or rats rats. Yeah gray and black rats were in another pack. So I will link them uh, in the description as I link everything else. But the black hot glue worked really well because, you know, these items are all black. The the um, the spiders are black and the rat is black. So uh, that's why I prefer to use the black glue because then if it, you know, if there's some overflow, you're not going to really notice it. So I'm just going to go around and just randomly place there. There's no rhyme or reason to it. And then uh, that is it, it's done. All right guys, this is done. I love how it came out. It's so super cute with the, I like, I so I added something. I did a hanging spider. So if you have like a really thin piece of like translucent see-through like thread or something, you know, it's, it's or a piece of hair. <laughs> this, this is actually a piece of my hair. You can uh, hang a spider off. So. I know I'm, I'm a weirdo. Sorry guys. You know, you just, you're always trying to invent new things. So I am going to, uh, take pictures of these and uh, post them at the end of this. But as always guys, thank you for watching. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, share, subscribe, comment. I love to hear your feedback. Check out my Facebook group. It's a crafting for things that I posted a don't do tutorials on as well as my Instagram. Don't forget Glitter Makes It Superstars group. They have fun giveaways every Sunday. You could, rent, bleh, you could win a three pack of glitter if people like your project the most. And that is it for this tutorial, guys. I will see you all next time. Bye.